apologize, but fuck it anyway. <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> Go ahead, please, drink up, all right? Because uh, you're helping me in two ways when you drink. One, I don't feel like such an alcoholic. I feel like maybe I'd fit in somewhere, and that'd be great, you know, for the first time ever. Because with the last name Cox and a face like this, fuck, you'd be rapey too. <laughs> But there's different degrees of rapey, I noticed, all right? Three distinct categories. You have the people on the internet, all right? Uh, I like to call them tech support. <laughs> because they're on their Facebook, you know? You guys have a Facebook? Fuck that shit, all right? Face fuck. I don't Facebook. <laughs> you can go ahead and try to catch a predator all you want, you know? That's... Facebook? Really? No, fuck that. If I'm going to rape someone, I'm going out there and do it myself. Get my hands dirty. <laughs> And I go on support because they make me feel like, once again, I'm not alone. I like to feel like maybe, you know, I've got some people I can relate to. We have these people I like to call showboaters. You know, 275 pound fucking twinkie fed sons of bitches. You'll catch them forcing their fucking date into a trunk of a car. Just... When they're showboating, because they got the strength and they can prove it. Look at me, alright? I couldn't fucking intimidate a toddler. Believe me, I've tried. I would call myself a marksman, if anything. Because I'm not gonna come up to you and be like, how you doing? No, no, you'll lock eyes with me a couple times across the bar and think everything's fine. Then you'll go to talk to a friend, meanwhile I'm fucking sinking roofies in your drink like I'm playing fucking quarters. <laughs> All right, this will get my shoulders, I'm fine. So, yeah. Oh, that hurts so bad. <laughs> But people won't even know they've been raped by me until afterwards. Wake up, why am I in the bathroom? They come out, see me, they're like, I have deja vu and my asshole hurts. I don't know what to think of that. I'd like to call that a good night. No, I'm kidding. I've never raped anybody. The closest I got to rape was this girl I used to bang. I don't say date because I'm not a faggot. What the fuck? You know, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'll beat it in her bush, but I'm not going to beat around it. and retarded, which is a really good combination because they usually go hand in hand. Like, I love God. Really? Take off your pants. <laughs> but we, we used to go out at something heavy. You know, they'd be like, uh, we had a safety word. It was really funny to me because she picked it and it's, it was Jesus. You don't realize how many times you say that until you're about to bust. You're like handcuffed to some bedposts. You got like fucking nipples hooked up to a car battery with a set of jumper cables. Jesus! No, bitch, I didn't say stop. You ride that. So I suggest that we change it to something like, you know, let's change the word. Let's make the word harder. She thought I meant the word harder. So I'm putting her head through the fucking bedpost, just fucking railing her into the wall. You know, she's like, harder, harder. I thought she was just egging me on. I was like, really? You know what? I'm turning her fucking pooper into a pulp. I'm mashing that shit up. We weren't together very long. But those are, my favorite, those are my favorite kind of relationships where you don't get along with her at all. You didn't meet her at a party and you fuck her, so she calls you back. You're like, great, why did I give her my number? I like Twilight and I like listening to Kenny Chesney. Did I tell you to take your mouth off of that? I'm sorry, girl. I'm fucking put that back in there. I'm not done. This train don't stop. Ever. But th those are my favorite relationships when you can't get along at all. Because all you do is fight. Just like, it's like, hey, you want to take me out? You're like, no, God, quit fucking nagging me. You're pissing me off. Ten minutes later, I'm sorry, babe. They get that great makeup sex where you're like, bitch, you better lock that door because we're breaking the fucking furniture. <laughs> get complaints from the cops. And that was the closest I ever got to rape. They thought it was really raping her. I mean, she said harder, so I gave it to her. <laughs> but if you're like me, you like to have a lot of fun. There's a couple of things I like to do for fun in a grocery store, for instance. <laughs> You go and you grab a can of Pringles, slide it up your sleeve, you know, all slick, because everyone here has stolen something, all right? You have to admit that. Don't fucking lie to me. <laughs> you sneak into the bathroom, you take half the chips out, you know? You eat the other half the Pringles, throw them away, I don't give a fuck what you do with them. That's between you and the Pringles. 
If you shit in the can, put the other half the Pringles back on top. Make sure you don't crinkle the top of that wrapper because uh, it's got to, someone's got to buy it. They get home, they start eating it, they're all stoned, watching football, like, oh man, you tackled the ship. <laughs> this is not cool. Someone pooped in my Pringles. <laughs> Or you get a hit of acid, and you put it on each one of those little sprayers that you know kind of spritzes the produce. <laughs> and not everyone here has the tolerance to acid like I do. Like, I'll take 12 hits and go to school and be like, ace that test. <laughs> so when it's sprayed across all the produce, and all those, you know, hundreds of people, you know, a day going to the grocery store, and they buy the celery or some shit, they have no tolerance to acid. So meanwhile, you just sit at home and feel good about the fact that the 6 o'clock news is coming on. Tonight, on the 6 o'clock news, naked pillagers are set fire to the Kmart, but naked. Are your kids in danger? I don't have any kids, but I'd like to see where the fuck this is going. Alright, I'd like to leave you tonight with a little thing I've invented called a cursory rhyme. It's like Mother Goose, except it's not made for faggots. You get one part Mother Goose, two parts vulgarity, three parts reality. All Ronnie. I call it the tribute to a tramp. There once was a man named Jack, who had an addiction to crack. And down on his luck in the need of a buck, he'd do all he could for a sack. Well, out in the streets in the middle of the night, selling sex to whoever would buy, I'll give you a nickel if you'll tickle my pickle. As he turned, he saw there stood a guy. <laughs> well, surprised by the sight that came out of the blue, he thought to himself, what the fuck do I do? He's still craving this bag, he winked at the fag, and he knew he must jerk off this dude. <laughs> well, an hour had passed, and they were finished at last, when he reminded the man of the money. He said he was poor and made a break for the door, but Jack didn't think this was funny. <laughs> so traced by the tramp who had picked up the lamp, the john had been struck on his head. And as I caused him to fall in the middle of the hall, he knew that the stranger was dead. So hauled off to jail with no chance of bail and sentenced to a life without crack, where still he gets screwed by many a dude, and thus ends the story of Jack.